Hi friends, welcome to the first day of Showtober and welcome back to Show Me in the Book Club. So just to kind of give you an idea, I wanted to start Showtober um, to celebrate me. <laughs> I feel like I don't do a good job at that and it was a really rough year and I usually get a bunch of anxiety around my birthday every year just because I feel like I don't have anything to show for it and I know I need to get out of that mindset. So why not celebrate myself by doing the thing that I love, which is creating YouTube videos and content about books. <laughs> so here we are. For our first video, we are going to talk about the October 2022 releases by Black authors or authors of color. And yeah, all of these books will be listed in the underneath a bar for you guys to purchase if you would like to from Shelby in the Book Club. And I will try to link excuse me the audiobooks as well so if you would like to hear what the october releases are for the year of our lord beyonce 2022 here we go okay so as y'all know i got my handy dandy ipad um so that we can read off of what is coming out this month i will put the books somewhere on the screen for you all in the release date as well so first we have an ocean apart by sarah lee beautiful black girl on the cover y'all know how i feel about books of black people on the cover i'm just gonna buy it um but this says it's 1954 and in barbados ruby haynes spots an advert i always want to say advertisement an advertisement for young women to train as nurses for the new national health service in great britain her sister connie take some persuading but soon the sisters are on their way to a new country and a whole new world of experiences as they start their training in Hertfordshire I suppose um they discover England isn't quite the promised land for every door that's open to them the sisters find many slammed in their faces and though the girls find friendships with their new fellow nurses connie struggles with being so far from home and keeping the secret keeping secret the daughter she has left behind in search of a better life for both of them that sounds like it's gonna be good let's see what do we have next this one which is a mystery is called soul of a killer a books and biscuits mystery by abby colette so it says Keaton and Kobe are fraternal twins who were separated as children, but now they found each other in open books and biscuits in the pleasant Pacific North West town of Timber Lake. Business is booming, but even so, trouble seems always seems to find them. Mama Zola, Kobe's devoted foster mother, has taken up residence in Timber Lake. She and Pete, one of the bookstore's quirky employees, bring a peach cobbler over to her church's potluck. And then someone who sampled the cobbler is found dead. Mama Zola and Pete find themselves suspects in the murder. But luckily, Kobe and Keaton are ready to sling out a side of justice. That sounds like it's going to be good. So next we have... Hold on a second, y'all. jackal by aaron e adams again another cover with a beautiful black person on it this one says liz rocher is coming home reluctantly as a black woman liz doesn't exactly have fond memories of jonestown pennsylvania a predominantly white town but her best friend is getting married so she braces herself for a weekend of awkward passive aggressive reunions Liz has grown, though she can handle whatever awaits her. But on the day of the wedding, somewhere between dancing and dessert, the couple's daughter, Coraline, disappears. And the only thing left behind is a piece of white fabric covered in blood. That sounds interesting and very, very spooky Halloween. That comes out in a couple of days, actually. October 4th. Very, very spooky Halloween. 
Um, who would take the baby and why? Is the baby going to be okay? Uh, we might have to read that one. Y'all, I don't know what's up with my eyeballs today. But they are not cooperating. And y'all gonna see that in the next couple of videos because it's just not. Okay, next we have the impatience or the impatient by Dajali Amandu Amal. And it is a translated work. It's translated from French. So this says three women, three stories, three three linked destinies. In North Cameroon, well-to-do young Ramla is torn from her true love and wed to a manipulative older man. Safira, the her co-wife, juggles envy and empathy for this new bride has with disappointment in the husband she desperately loves. Like her older sister, Ramla Hindu is married off to a man she does not know or want, a distant cousin whose instability and violence terrifies her. From an early age, these women were raised to submit to men or risk shame in repudiation. I know that word. I know that word. Of themselves and their families. They're advised to have patience they are told that their fates are the will of the all-powerful and that this is unthinkable or rather impossible to defy tradition sounds interesting next we have jade is a twisted green jade brown is a 24 year old first generation jamaican woman living in toronto who uh in Toronto must find a way to pick up the pieces and discover who she is following the mysterious death of her twin sister grappling with her grief Jay seeks solace in lovers and friends during an array of hilarious heartbreaking adventures as she investigates some of life's most frustration frustrating paradoxes she holds tight to old friends and her ex-girlfriend lifelines between past and present on the journey to turning 25 she finally sees that she belongs to herself and goal was about the business of reclaiming that self <sighs> so this sounds like a coming of age story um that but just for adults right i think often coming of age means children um when really life is just a consistent coming of age story um so i think that's um quite interesting and that sounds pretty good next we have women of the harlem renaissance this is a collection of poems and stories written by women of color during the harlem renaissance now this one i'm not really a poem girl at at all but i was just saying to one of my friends that I feel like there should be more books about the Harlem Renaissance or in that particular time frame because it is so rich with art. And I think often we are focused on showing the art and showing the literature and not actually exploring deeper into that, if that makes any sense. Um, so, yeah, I think this one will be pretty good. Next, we have The Confessions of Matthew Strong. So this one says... Hold on, is this one? Is this the right one? This is Brianna Cole, so that's for this one. Okay, so I think this is the right. Yes, okay. So one could argue. The story begins the night Allegra Douglas is awarded Distinguished Chair in Philosophy 
at her top tier university in New York. The same night her grandmother dies, or the before that, the day Allie left Birmingham and never looked back, or even before that, the day her mother disappeared. But for our purposes, Allie's story begins at the end when she is finally ready to tell her version of what happened with the white supremacist named Matthew Strong. From the beginning, Allie had the clues in a spat of possibly connected disappearances of other young Black women in a series of reluctantly restored um do, 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 plantation homes and letters outlining an uprising in a map of slave roots and old estates and hidden caves and buried tunnels and finally in confessional that should never have existed they just have to make a case strong enough for the fbi and police to listen this is when ali herself disappears ali is a survivor she survived the newly post Jim post Jim Crow South. She survived cancer and she will survive being stalked and kidnapped by Matthew Strong, who seeks to ignite a revolution. The surprise in this doesn't lie in the question of will she be taken, it lies in how she and her community outsmart a tactical madman. That sounds really good. That sounds really, really good. Like it's gonna have a bunch of information in it that we never really thought about um I think that's gonna be really really good next we have hold on a second guys okay we only got two more so next we have behind her lives by Brianna Cole this says that's not my sister Overwhelmed by shock and relief, those are the only words Devin can muster when she is called to identify the body of a suicide victim, a body she was informed was her sister Kennedy, but as she stares at the lifeless stranger, she's filled with questions. Who is this woman? Why was Devin listed as family? And most important, where is Kennedy? Her intuition tells her just one thing, this can't be a total coincidence desperation to put the pieces together Devin launches her own investigation soon she finds herself tangled in a web of secrets and lies so twisted that it blurs the lines between fact and fiction and between the sister she thought she knew and the one who seems to have many hidden dangerous lives but only Kennedy would have the answers to increasingly urgent questions just one possibility is clear kennedy isn't missing maybe she just doesn't want to be found and maybe you can never truly know another person even your own sister we might have to read that one too because that sounds good that sounds good allergies are doing a number on me y'all so the next one, last but certainly not least, this one is called Anywhere You Run, and it is by Wanda and Morris. It is also a thriller. It says, in the summer of 1964, it is the summer of 1964, and three innocent men are brutally murdered for trying to help Black Mississippians secure the right to vote. Against this backdrop, 21-year-old Violet Richards finds herself in more trouble than she's ever been in her life suffering a brutal attack of her own she kills the man responsible but with color of violet skin there's no way she can escape jim crow justice in jackson mississippi before anyone can find the body or finger her as the killer that's what she said she decides to run with the help of her white boo Violet escapes, but desperation and fear leads her to hide out in the small rural town of Chillicothe, Chillicothe, Georgia, unaware that danger may be closer than she thinks. Huh. That sounds interesting. And I've heard good things about Wanda and Morris, like, as an author. I know a lot of people like her. Um, so that may not be, that may not be so bad. Um, like I stated before, all of these will be listed in the underneath a bar if you guys would like to purchase them, whether from Limbro FM or from Shelby in the Bookstore. You can support the store both ways. Um, just let me know. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Happy Sheltober. Again, sorry about my teary eyes and my stuffy nose. <laughs>
<laughs> and if no one told you today, I love you. Um, if you've made it this far, put a flower emoji for my pretty dress. <laughs> Bye, guys.